feel like with every single one of these I give off a different vibe like last ones was kind of like you know cozy relaxed we got like the light purple eyeliner going and today's it's not I mean yeah you just get to see multiple sides of my personality through this hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is annabeth and on this channel we talk about a lot of things knitting uh knitting updates sock machine knitting uh those are the main two things <laughs> but occasional other knitting fiber arts related videos as well if you're new here thank you so much for joining us i hope you stick around and if you're a returning viewer thank you for sticking around i'm so happy you're here um so today i am coming at you with another knitting update whoa she actually recorded two in one month who is she? She is somebody who has gotten a lot of yarn delivered lately and needs to talk about it now, otherwise I will be completely overwhelmed if I let this go another month without a knitting update and like half of that video will just be acquisitions. So coming at you with a mid to late February, at this point I think we're solidly in late February knitting update. So today we're gonna go through finished objects whips and acquisitions in that order. I know some people don't really like an acquisition section, especially if it's larger to be at the beginning, so given that this is a little bit of a larger acquisitions heavy video, um, I'll scooch it to the end. So like I said, FOs, whips, then acquisitions. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it then. Okay, so first up is finished objects. Um, we're just going to do rapid fire through some um, FOs that I have cranked on my sock machine um, recently since my last knitting update. We'll try and go rapid fire through those and then I'll show you my main FO for this update. Um, so a lot of socks. This is not um, all of the socks and all of the FOs from my sock machine because a couple of them were gifts and those gifts birthday gifts, so I'm not going to tell you what they were, um, and those birthday gifts are already on their way to their recipients, so I don't have them with me anymore. So, alright, let's go. Rapid fire socks. So, in my last knitting update, I talked about wanting to crank some shorties with my In the Stacks colorway. That was my New Year's countdown from Teeny Button for 2023, so here are all of those. This one is End Papers. This one is leather bound. I really loved how the stripes worked up on that. This one is dust jacket. Some nice greens and yellows and browns there. And then this one is book plate. I really like book plate as well because I feel like the blue speckles in here remind me of blue pen ink. So then it's like if you get a signed book plate from the author, maybe they signed in blue pen. That's also how I remember the difference between book plate and dust jacket, because at first I was like, oh man, how am I, how am I going to remember which is which for my whole tracking my knits and what knits I wear thing? Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I do to help me remember. <laughs> um, so those are the four pairs of shorties that I cranked from those 50 gram sock skeins. I do have the leftovers all wound up on this cone here. And the plan for this is, honestly, maybe when I'm done recording this video, I'm going to wind up the, um, the final full skein. So this was the New Year's Eve skein. Um, this is called In the Stacks. So I'll make a full pair of socks, a full tall pair of socks with this, and then the shorties that I make with this and these will be a little bit of an experiment. Um, I'm thinking I should have enough. Now that I have more experience with both tall socks and shorties, I should have enough for a pair of tall socks in just this colorway, and then a pair of shorties where this is the main colorway, and then like every heel and toe is one of these. And that should use up a good amount of my leftovers, and then anything left over beyond that will just get wound up onto my scrap cone for future projects. So yeah. Um, there's that. Um, got a little bit into knitting plans there. Other cranked FO that I have with me is this pair of shorties. This pair of shorties is cranked in, the main color is Kyoto Sunset from Dream and Color Yarns, and the 
contrasting color, the light blue, is I Have to Go Home from Red Door Fiber Studio. And this pair is for my mom, because she really liked this combination of blues and other colors worked up too. Okay, that's all of my cranked FOs that I still have with me for now. So then my other finished object, my hand knit finished object, was my whip from the last knitting update. So here it is. Oh, it's, it's kind of floppy. But um, this is my turtleneck ranunculus. I just realized I was showing you a side view. What am I doing? There we go. My total neck ranunculus, or my turnunculus, um, this is knit up in fixtures from the Cabin Collection collaboration between Cesium Yarns and Rachel from Rachel is Knitting. Um, and the super exciting thing about this is the today, as I am recording this, February 23rd, Friday, February 23rd, the Cabin Collection is coming back. Um, it's coming back on Cesium Yarns website. I believe it's now a dyed to order option. So that's super exciting. So you can get fixtures or any of the other cabin colorways. You can check out Rachel's Instagram for all the beautiful stories behind all the different colorways. And it's just super exciting. I personally will probably get a couple sock skeins probably in the um, Creator of Beauty, which is the light variegated purple, and um, is it called purple underpants? It was the more like bright purple that was with the collection. There was a bright purple and a bright pink, and together they're meant to be like the fuchsia flower bushes, representative of that, um, particularly the fuchsia flower bushes that have the purple middle. So then it's like outer petals, inner petals, and they're like purple underpants. So. I'm not explaining this well. I'm gonna get the two purples on sock skeins, probably for cranked socks. There we go. That's that's that. So yeah, go check out Cesium Yarn. Cabin Collection is back. Hopefully we'll still be back um, by the time I edit and post this video. I think it will. Um, okay, so that is it for finished objects. So we're gonna move right into whips and I have a lot more to show you this time compared to last time. So let's get into whips next. Alrighty, talking about whips. So I have a total of three whips right now, which is two more than last time, and they're all new. So let's talk about them. Um, so first up, let me just pick it up real quick. Oh gosh, I almost stepped on the yarn. First up is, let me slip it around. Ta -da! This is my Lento. Um, as you can see, I have split for sleeves on it. I am now working on the body, and I am knitting this up in Hello Stella fibers. The main color, or not the main color, but the fingering weight is her Highland fingering um, in the colorway Saffron. And the fuzz that I'm using, the lace weight, is her Surrey Alpaca um, in Marigold. So I really like how these two yellows are working together. It creates a little bit of a marling effect, but it's not so crazy that it's like a lot to look at. Like it, I feel like it just meshes together into this really nice golden yellow color for the whole sweater. Um, really enjoying this. I love the big gauge, but I love how warm the fabric still feels with the, with the fingering and the Surrey held together. Um, and you can see my stitch markers there for my progress. Um, yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about this right now. Um, it's a good straightforward top-down raglan, got a folded neckline, um, pretty much exactly what I needed after finishing the ranunculus. I wanted something else with like a bigger gauge um, that was almost a bit of a mindless knit because especially now that I've finished the raglan section and I've split for sleeves, it's literally just stocking it in the round, stocking it in the round forever until I hit the hem in the cuffs. So very happy with this. I'm super excited. I think it's going to be a fantastic spring time uh, springtime wearable knit um, with the larger gauge and everything so 
yeah, that's really all I have to say about it. I like it a lot. Um, I like the yellow. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the next one. <laughs> um, oh, this is also a great one for when I need a break between my other two whips, and I'll show you why now. So that's the Lento, and my next one is actually my most recent whip, um, but I've gotten a lot of work done on it. My most recent cast on, I should say. Um, uh, I haven't put it on big enough needles, but I'm getting so close to the sleeve split that I don't know if I really need to. Like, it's fine. I'm still stretching out the color work and everything. Anyway, ta-da! I probably should put it on larger needles, but these are my fixed sixes, so I don't always feel like <laughs> dealing with um, interchangeable needles, so here we are. Um, so, I didn't even tell you what this is yet. This is the Antique Flora by Wool and Pine Designs, and I am using Red, Four, Red Door Fiber Studios, Red 4, um, Classic DK in Sophie's Castle and There You Are Sweetheart, so both um, Howl's Moving Castle colorways that came back with the Once in the Blue Moon connection, collection. I can't freaking talk today. Um, and yeah, I really love how this is working out. This is one, it's, it's a really good, like, almost mindfulness exercise um, for me because when I was like here on the color work I was like oh this doesn't have enough contrast it's not gonna look very good and I was like no no, no trust the process let's keep going then I got to like here and I'm like okay it's it's looking a little better and now I'm up here and the whole thing's really coming together um and I just have to remind myself, like, nobody's going to be looking this close at my sweater unless they're, like, a really big weirdo. Um, they're probably going to look more like this, like this far away. Um, so when I hold it that far away, I can see the pattern <laughs> a lot better. Um, so it's a good exercise, and not so much mindfulness, but, like, perspective. Like, it's going to look amazing when it's done. And just because I'm, like, holding it up here while I'm knitting it, not even that close, um, and because I'm the one staring at it for hours on end, like, that's why I question myself a lot. So, yeah, um, it's a really fun knit. So far, I am really enjoying the color work, um, the charts are great, and I'm super excited because this will be the first one where the color work goes beyond the yoke like well that's not a very good explanation because I've done full color work um sweaters what I mean is like it's a color work yoke but then it extends beyond the sleeve split sleeve split so on the charts there's like a mark where it's like split for sleeves here and then you continue and finish the chart around the body and around the sleeves and I'm just super excited to see how that works up um so yeah, that's this one, Antique Flora in Red Door, Fiber Studios, my latest cast on, and it's just absolutely beautiful, another fantastic, like, spring vibe sweater. So then, my last whip, it's not a sweater, it is in fact a pair of socks. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably remember the early process of this sock. Um, I'm just going to show it to you, so... This is my current sock whip. This is, in fact, a new design that I am working on. Um, if, Like I said, if you follow me on Instagram, you may remember I posted on my stories a little bit ago the first attempt at this pattern, um, and I just did not like how it was looking. It looked too crowded. I feel like you couldn't get the whole like sense that I was going for. So... The goal with these is to kind of look like the contrasting color is like slowly oozing <laughs> over the main color. Um, so like we got some longer drips, we got just like a little wave, kind of like a, a rapidly cooling hot fudge over a scoop of ice cream, or like Nickelodeon slime covering somebody. Um, so that's kind of the inspiration behind these. I feel like this version of the color work is giving that a lot more. Um, 
So I'm really happy with this. I might tweak a couple things for the second sock since, you know, this is this is my sample. So like, I don't think it really matters. I'll make another sample when I test this pattern anyway. So I might make some tweaks to the second sock, but I I like this one a lot more than my first version. Um this one also needs a name. <laughs> um my original working name was like ooey gooey socks. I don't like that very much. I don't want to call them slime socks because I don't want to limit, like, through connotation, I don't want to limit the colors that people might choose for them. Because, like, if you want to do neutrals and have it look like chocolate or caramel or whatever, like, I don't want to call them slime socks then, you know, because just because this says slime. Um, so if you have any name suggestions, uh, let me know in the comments because I, I don't know what to call them yet. I don't want to call them slime socks. Maybe ooze socks. I don't know. We'll have to see. Oh, I didn't even tell you what I'm knitting this in. I am knitting this in the Little Foxes Red Fox Socks. This is the Beetlejuice sock set um, from, I want to say the 2022 uh, Red Fox Sing Along, or Little Foxes Sing Along Club. Um, yeah, that's where that's from. Red Fox Sock. Fantastic. Uh, I will take any and all name suggestions right now because your girl's struggling. Um, so yeah, that's all three whips for right now. So we're going to go ahead and move into acquisitions and I'm so excited to talk about these. Okay, so like I said at the top of the video, I do have quite a number of acquisitions. So if you're just not into that, feel free to not listen to this part of the video. I don't blame you. Um, but I do have quite a few, so let's get into it. First up is not a yarn acquisition. It's actually a tool acquisition that I was really excited for. Um, dun -dun -dun -dun. These are... That doesn't help. These are <laughs> cord smiths. Um, they are the invention of um, Autumn from the Size Inclusive Collective on Instagram. Um, she has like a Google form order form that you can fill out and if you get two it's there's a slight discount so I got two I got a purple and a green one that's not their real names I think it's like sage and magenta um, but I was super excited about these my friend Rachel from Ma Rachel is knitting who I mentioned before um, has a little video explaining these a bit too so definitely go check out her video um, but the whole point of these is to make knitting eye cord a whole lot easier because um, I I am definitely one of those people that does not enjoy knitting I-cord I don't like doing like three stitches moving it three stitches moving it like it's a pain so these you might be able to see have three little latch hooks and the whole point is that it's literally a latch hook where you can just knit all three stitches at once and keep going and in no time you have I-cord available which is amazing um and also it's been tested and excuse me it's been tested and this design unlike some other like i-cord knitting cranking machines this design can use yarn from a lacer fingering weight all the way up to a bulky weight like the latch hooks are like they have enough of a circumference i guess is that the right term for hooks um in order to handle worsted, Aran, bulky yarn as well. And I believe um, it's been mentioned either on Instagram or maybe on YouTube or something. Um, if you were to use like fingering weight yarn to then create an I-cord that's about a bulky weight, you can then create an I-cord out of that I-cord with the cordsmith still. So I'm super excited about this. I um, this will really come in handy when I am knitting tank tops, when I'm doing I-cord edges, um, and also when I want to make little gifts for somebody. Um, in one of the more recent, or one of the final, actually, issues of Pom Pom Magazine, there was a, like, kind of like a mug rug slash coaster pattern, um, that used I-cord. So I definitely want to try making some of those for friends, acquaintances, family members, 
yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So that's my one non-yarn acquisition. So now let's get into the yarn. Okay, I had to take a little break because my I have a bit of a frog in my throat today. Um, so now we're on to yarn acquisitions. Um, so first up, I was so excited about this one. Um, let me get it organized. <laughs> Ta-da! So these three beautiful skeins are from Painted Fern Fiber Company. Um, this one is called Beetle. It was part of the Beneath collection that recently happened. Um, this is obviously going to become Cranked Socks because can you just imagine how beautiful this pool of orange and blue is going to look when it's all worked up? Hi, buddy. Bye, buddy. <laughs> no, it's okay. You can leave. I'm not forcing you to stay in here with me. Yeah, are you gonna... Yep, it's it's not sheep anymore, see? He's smelling the yarn I haven't talked about yet. I know, it might still smell like a sheep, but it's not sheep anymore, I promise. You gonna stay in here for a little bit? No, okay, bye. Is it even a video on this channel if we don't have a Charlie intermission. Anyway, Crank Socks on Beetle. So excited. I love this teal. It's going to be beautiful. Um, and then the other two were from Diana's first collection, her debut collection, um, but she brought the colorways back for the Beneath drop as well. So this is Midnight Pond and Rain. This is on the Painted DK base, which is 100% Superwash Merino wool. Um, and I'm going to use these two together for a cheeky checky beanie from Ocean Knits, I believe. Um, my other friend Rachel, who's Anthronits over on Instagram, um, she tested the cheeky check, cheeky checky beanie, um, and I thought it was super cute, so I got these two colors to make one. And, um, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I tend to make a new hat for every one of my brother's football seasons, so this will probably be this coming season's football watching football game day hat. So, yeah. Alright, <laughs> that's it for that. Well, the yarn for that. Um, Diana is just the sweetest human being from Painted Fiber Yarn Company. Um, so I ordered those three skeins, and then she also sent me a surprise. Um, her mom makes bags of various sizes um and I guess they had a little bit of extra fabric so they whipped up this one for me and sent it to me as a little surprise present I'm obsessed <laughs> with the frogs and the mushrooms um she said it was also a congratulations gift because um again if you follow me over on Instagram you may know that I recently got into grad school for the fall which is super exciting so this was like a congratulatory gift as well and it's so cute. Like, are you freaking kidding me? Every single one of her, Diana's drops has bags with adorable and really cool fabric like this. So be sure to check her out, please. Um, okay, so that's Painted Fern Fiber Company. The next acquisition I had was these two. These are from Sorella Yarn. Both of them are on the nylon sock base, which is an 80-20 superwash nylon blend. And this colorway is Believe from when they brought back the Knitflix collection. Was it the end of last year, I believe, it came back? Um, I believe it came back. Um, obviously this is inspired by the TV show Ted Lasso, which is genuinely one of my favorite TV shows <laughs> ever. So of course I had to get a couple skins of this. One of these is for sure becoming just regular plain tall socks. Um, and then the other... So, speaking about football season again, um, my parents have already requested some cranked socks in a blue stripe, um, so I'm going to get some self-striping probably from my local yarn store, but um, self-striping can be, in my opinion, um, can be kind of hit or miss when it comes to heels and toes. I really love how some of my self-striping socks have worked up with the heels and toes, especially the short row that the short row, heel and toe, that the sock machine creates, um, but I think, um, the other skein 
and like the remnants of the first one or however it ends up working out um i'm gonna get one pair of just believe socks out of these and then the rest i am gonna use for probably cuffs heels and toes of football season socks for me my parents maybe some family friends that tend to come to a lot of games or um some other team families that we've gotten really close to over the years like I'm a little weird like this. Um, the fact that this colorway was inspired by Ted Lasso and its name is Believe, like, I, a lot of the time I use colors and their names as, like, a way of manifesting, I guess, kind of like, um, how you'll hear about women who would knit prayer shawls and stuff, like, not to make a one-to-one -one comparison, but, I don't know, like, it's almost like I want to take the good vibes from this yarn and put it into socks for football season to then give those good vibes to football season and to my brother and to his teammates so that they have a successful and safe season. You can call me crazy if you want, that's fine, I get it. Um, so yeah, that's the long rambling plan-ish for these. And then um, the last three skeins that I have are um, my first time buying from this dyer, so I was super excited about it. These three are from Skein and The Stitch, and these were the Sarah J Maas leftovers. So we have I Am Not Afraid, we have Light It Up, and we have Lady Death. And these are all, no surprise here, going to become cranked socks most likely. Unless I find like a really nice maybe textured sock pattern for one or two of them. But yeah, most likely will be uh, cranked socks. Yay! Um, so yeah, that's all of my acquisitions there. Um, like I said, if I had waited like another two weeks to talk about this stuff I probably would have been overwhelmed with the acquisitions so hence the knitting update today all right that's really all that I have for you guys today um, I hope you enjoyed this video if you did feel free to give it a thumbs up um, let me know in the comments maybe what I should name my new sock design um, anything else I guess <laughs> that was really the main question I asked this time um, if you've used the cordsmiths before do you have any tips and tricks um, yeah all of that good stuff um, and if you're not already you can follow me over on Instagram I am Annabeth is knitworthy with underscores between the words and you can also subscribe to my channel turn on notifications so you're notified when I post I don't have a very set posting schedule so those notifications might come in handy if you want to keep up with my videos um other than that i hope you have a good rest of the month of february um i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one bye